Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you've been following this channel for a little bit, you know that Blender 2.8 has been very actively being changed. They're doing something called CodeQuest, and they've gotten all their developers together into one place, or at least their senior developers together in one place, to try and make changes as quickly as possible for the upcoming Blender 2.8 release. And this is going to have some big usability changes. Now, I've done some videos, I'll link a couple of them down below, that have basically highlighted some of the changes they have made to the user interface here. And some of those changes have definitely been for the better, and some have have been not so much for the best. And you can tell from today, from what I'm going to showcase today, that developers are actually listening, which is very important. If you um, are really animated by a change they've made, do let them know in the developer forums at developer.blender.org. Uh, your feedback is being listened to. Now, they may not actually change it, but they are at least listening. So let's jump in and look at a couple of the changes they have just made. Now, do keep in mind, this is Blender 2.8, which is not even alpha yet. This is very much actively under development and I'm using a nightly build. You can get them from builder.blender.org. So I'm using uh, basically this June 18th nightly build for this. And there's also a good chance that by the time you watch this potentially tomorrow, um, they've already undid all the changes they have made. But you can get an idea from tracking these changes where we're probably going to end up. So without further ado, let's jump into Blender 2.8 nightly build. And the changes they have made are pretty good. Actually, I, I have to say, I actually like every change they've made here. Now, one of the things they did in the last release was they changed it so that the tab key was the spacebar key. And this was bad. This was a very bad change. I think pretty much everyone agrees across the board that it just, um, not the greatest change in the world. But the problem was beforehand, tab was used to switch between modes. Control tab was used to switch between, uh, so you could do control tab one, control tab two, control tab three to switch between the sub modes. And what they did is they moved those up to the number key. So if I press number two, I switch to, um, to mode two, three, four, five, etc. Well, what they've done now is they've actually shifted it back to tab. So the tab is back to switching between modes. And I think people prefer that hands down. But what the big difference that they've done is now if you hit tab and hold it, move your mouse, da -da! Pi menus are finally a thing in Blender. So at this point in time, Pi menus are the default. This is no longer an add-in, it is just enabled. So that is the one they have done initially. So you've got tab now switches between uh, your edit mode, your object mode, etc., cetera, um, and then holding down tab brings up the mouse mode and it shows you the different options you can switch between. You can also see there's the number keys available as well. So if you want to switch to those different modes, you still do have those numbers available to you. But this is something a lot of people have been waiting for. Now, if you're interested, you can actually modify your tab behavior now. If you go to user preferences, um, interface, there's now a top level menu for your Pi menus. You can determine how big they are, how far apart they are, how fast the animations are, etc. But Pi menus now have officially come to Blender 2.8. I know a lot of people love them, and I know a few people hate them. So that's going to be a mixed bag for people. But I think it's definitely a great idea to bring the tab key back and not make it into the spacebar menu. On that topic, the spacebar menu is still changing. So before the spacebar menu used to be the type up pop-up search menu. So if you needed any kind of a command, you hit space, and then poof, this guy would pop up. You could type in what you were looking for. So say you were looking for bevel or Bezier curve, you could see there, and then they show up like so. You just typed it in and you could find it. Well, this is no longer on space. It is now on uh, the tilde or the apostrophe key, basically the key that is above tab. Um, now that's going to change from computer to computer. It's not one of those standardized keys, but I'm assuming they're going to keep it the same to that particular position. Um, and I do like this better. Now the question you could have is what exactly is Spacebar going to do? And in the last release, Spacebar did this weird sticky log kind of key thing. Now it's a context menu. So um, see here, I just tab vertex paint. You bring up those particular options. We switch out of vertex paint into uh, edit mode and it brings up those particular options. This is a nice development. I do like uh, this change for sure. I think that they've met with a nice compromise. Um, I like to have tab back. Tab was a good shortcut for switching between modes and I'm happy to see that back. Uh, the tilde key for search. I'm fine with that. Now I've heard, you know, again, some people have said that on certain keyboards, that isn't necessarily there. I'd be curious to find out if any of you guys have actually run into a problem with that key not being on your keyboard. I don't think there's any keyboard layouts that start at one though. So there should always be a key there. So I think we should be fine there. And I really do like the menu that pops up for space. So I think they've hit on the perfect key set there. And this was heavily feedback driven because I know a lot of people certainly were not happy with the changes they suggested. Now, another thing they've changed here, a very minor change, you'll notice that the, um, 
um, the view selector up here, which I really like. This is going to be great. And I got a feeling a lot of this is moving towards um, a touch style interface. But what they've done is they've collapsed out those various different settings around. So you could do things here for like switching between orthographic and projection, cameras, um, panning, and then the zooming icons. They have um, basically made them uh, flat or paralleled out. Um, so let me get out of camera mode so you can see what I mean. So before they used to be here, 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 and here. Now they've turned them out into a set of buttons like so. Not a really big difference. Um, I'm not really sure if I care either way on this particular change. Uh, the other thing you've probably noticed is there's this floating window now based off the last command that you did. So here, if I've got translate, it pops up down here, you can minimize it down. So if I switch over here and I do a S for scale, oh, that was D, S for scale, let that go you'll see the resize one comes up. I'm not sure about this change. Uh, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it, but I don't see a huge value in it, uh, but it's definitely um, a change anyways. Uh, now, the last thing that you've really changed here, um, and this one was, again, very unpopular initially, but I think their compromise solution is better than what they had before and definitely better than what they proposed. And that is these columns. So what they did is they made it so that all the columns were a single stack. And this allowed you to basically collapse down your interface quite a bit like this, which is great if you're trying to uh, save space on your machine. But if you're sitting here on a 4K monitor with 32 inches across, this is of absolutely no value to you at all. In fact, it kind of makes things more um, long form because it causes you to have to scroll each time one of these things comes down. So to get to your different information, this single stack definitely had a negative ramification there. Well, watch this. Now, as you expand it out, it will automatically resize to fit the width. So you can have multiple columns with this um, dynamically adjusting layout. This is slick. I think this is what they should have done all along. And I think that, um, and honestly, I can't think of a reason why anybody would disagree with this particular change. So again, they're tweaking their usability, but they're doing it in such a great way. And what I do find reaffirming here is this was a direct response to um, user input. The tab key was a direct response to user input. This, this might've just been a change for change's sake. I'm not sure. Um, now the downside is the one thing that they definitely haven't responded to yet, and this might be future considerations, but there's still this tab that's next to your um, general stuff that I don't like. Oh, and one other thing to keep in mind with the tab stuff. Um, so if I do additional, hopefully this isn't all crashy. Um, okay, it's not working. Not sure why it's not working. Uh, but basically, if you have multiple workspaces, you can switch between them using um, control tab and shift tab, just like every other program under the sun. So this tab changed back, this reversion to switch between modes thing has not, okay, there we go. So I can now do shift tab and control tab. So shift tab should move backwards. All right, well, at the very least, control tab is definitely working as planned. So um, the tab changes hasn't undo, undone that change that they've done in the recent version of Blender. So across the board, I'm impressed by uh, kind of where in the middle they're meeting here. I, I'd still like to see this uh, be useful. It's only really right now useful in sculpting mode. And here you can see the power of it, where you can see all the uh, brushes and options on command. You can change your brush on the fly, etc. But in all the other modes, it's just, a giant dead waste of space. So I'd like to see it either if they're gonna stick with this option, why don't they just move this into the sculpting window here as opposed to up here. I, this is the only thing right now change wise that they've made that I'm not a fan of. But I'm interested in hearing what you guys think. Do you think that all these changes they've made bringing tab back as the mode select change, um, having multiple columns resized like this on the fly, um, and the various other changes they've made, do you think they're they're kind of meeting us in the middle and they're going to create, you know, Blender 2.8 that is going to make most of the 2.7 purists happy? Or do you think they're going to alienate a good chunk of their user base no matter what they do here? Be interested in hearing what you think of this development and of Blender 2.8 in general. Uh, let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.